Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. When you read scripture, one of the things to look for is a theme that weaves its way all the way through scripture. And today we have that theme in very clear words. The theme is God is with us. Not only did the prophets say that, but in this first chapter of Matthew, we find again the beginning of what? That God is Emmanuel, that God is with us. Now you and I may doubt that. You and I may think, oh come on, that's just language from the Old Testament. I certainly haven't experienced God being with me. Every time I pray to him for something that really is important to me, God doesn't seem to be handling there. He doesn't seem to be close. He doesn't seem to be with us. He seems to be far away doing something else, perhaps watching the Buckeyes. And so it is that you and I can mislead ourselves by not recognizing how important that theme really is and how much we can rely on it. You see, you and I can rely on God being with us because Scripture tells us, but also our experiences, when we're honest with ourselves, allows us to see, allow us to see what God is doing in our world. There was a letter or a part of a letter, an article in JAMA in the Journal of the American Medical Association by a Dr. Paul Ruskin. He's a psychiatrist who specialized in geriatric older people. And on one occasion when he was teaching a class at the medical school at the University of Maryland, he actually wrote an article afterwards about his experiences. And in that particular article, he mentioned the fact that he had presented a case study to the students who were sitting in his class. And the case study it contained the following portion of the article which he then uh, read to the uh, students. He described the case study in a patient under his care like this. The patient neither speaks nor comprehends the spoken word. Sometimes she babbles incoherently for hours on end. She is so disoriented about person, place, and time she does not respond to her name. I have worked with her for the past six months, but she still shows complete disregard for her physical appearance. And she makes no effort to assist in her own care. She must be fed, bathed, clothed by others. Because she has no teeth, her food must be parade. Her shirt is usually soiled from almost incessant drooling. She does not walk. Her sleep pattern is erratic. She wakes in the middle of the night and screams and other, awakens others. Most of the time, she's friendly and happy. But several times a day, she gets quite agitated without any apparent cause. This then, then she wails until someone comes to comfort her. After presenting this to the students, he asked the students who would wish to care for this patient, and nobody raised their hand. And it's true even in our congregation, as much as we so often care for one another, we are always challenged to care even more. But what's interesting in this particular case is not the person that Hugh was described, although it's applicable, but after presenting this to the, Dr. Ruskin then asked his students if they would care, as I would ask you, will you care for you people? And then Dr. Ruskin said, I'm surprised that none of you offered to help because actually she's my favorite patient. I get immense pleasure from taking care of her, and I'm learning so much from her. She has taught me a depth of gratitude I never knew before. She has taught me the spirit of unwavering trust, and she has taught me the power of unconditional love. And then Dr. Ruskin said, let me show you her picture. And he pulled out the picture and passed it around. It was the photo of his six-month-old baby daughter. The first thing that we can learn about God being with us is that God always chooses the ordinary over the extraordinary. God always chooses to give rather than to take. 
God always is with us. And even in our text for today, we find that Joseph is being challenged. Joseph is being challenged by the angels. She ha he's already gone through a messy situation. If you think divorces are difficult today, back then it was really bad because even the betrothed, those who were just engaged today, you know, you just turn your ring in to somebody else and give it to somebody and you can just go back and forth and, and uh, have all sorts of relationships and it's really not all that serious. Back then, if you were betrothed, you were committed at least for a year and you did not have any contact or relationships with men or men with women. And in this particular case, Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant. Now he has an option. He can take her to the public view and scold her and not only scold her, which is far too weak, but to actually denounce her and she would be stoned to death. Joseph doesn't choose to do that. Joseph decides that he will have a quiet, quiet time where he will marry her so that she doesn't have to bear the shame nor the stones. And then he says to the angel, yep, you see what it says here, it's so interesting. Because it says, for he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they call his name, which means God, with us. And when Joseph woke from sleep, he did, let me emphasize, he did, as the angel of the Lord commanded him, he took Mary as his wife. You see, he didn't stop with words, no thoughts. No, even with a dream and say, oh, that was an interesting dream. He did what he had been commanded to do. And you and I are challenged to do what God commands us to do, regardless of who we are. Regardless of how intelligent, regardless of how bright, regardless of how sinful we are. We are called to obey each one of us. doesn't make any difference of our position. And that's what Joseph did. He obeyed. Mary previously had submitted herself. So we have pictures here of both Mary and Joseph submitting themselves in obedience to God because God is with them. Is God with you? We read here in this first chapter that God is with us. And we read in the last chapter, Matthew 28, verse 20, we read that the Lord has said that he will be with us to the ends of the earth. You see, that's where the overarching theme comes in. It starts in the Old Testament, continues in Matthew 1, that God is with us. And do we so often take him for granted? I do. I so often think that God ought to just be at my beck and call. I so often think that since I'm a pastor that I should get a little, you know, maybe some free tickets to the game. And so it goes on and on. But God is with us. What does that mean? There's a story, <coughs> excuse me, there's a story that I came across about the angel of Anzio. Have any of you read that story? Or It was actually written up by uh, Tom Brokaw in his book, The Greatest American. Americans are the heroes. And um, in that book, he profiles a picture of a, or a woman who was a nurse who was, worked uh, with the American army at the Battle of Anzio. And the Battle of Anzio was one of the worst battles in World War II. It lasted 136 days from June, January 22nd to June 5th. And 136 days of fighting blood. The Americans lost 7,000 troops killed. The Germans lost 5,000. The Americans lost 36,000 to injury and the Germans 30,000. And so if we forget the labels of German and, and, uh, and so forth or American, we will be able to understand that this was one of the biggest battles and one of the worst battles that took place during World War II. And the general suggested, recommended that she, Mary Wilson, who later on became the angel of Anzio, that they all go home, 
because they probably were going to lose. But she said, I'm not going to desert my troops now. I've been with them all the time, but I'm not going to desert them now. And that's what God is telling us. He's telling each one of us that God is with us, and which means that when we look in the manger, we ought to recognize that God is with us and he will not desert you, ever. Now it may seem that way, but again and again in scripture, we learn and we see that God indeed is a God who is with us, even here in Sulphur. Amen.